let's get into assemblies. Now, one thing I was going to show you guys is that you already know that you can come in and rename these parts and you can rename features and sketches, but you can also rename the tabs. So in this case, renaming the tab can help figure things out as far as sorting out the visuals and figuring out which tab is which um, on some of the larger assemblies. So here we go. We'll call this the treads and the assembly we can call the belt. Let's go into the assembly. There's several ways you can import parts. Now the first obvious one is that you come in and you want to insert parts and assemblies from other other tabs essentially. So you can come in and I want to put in one large tread, one small whole tread and one link. And you can do all three of them at once just by doing this. Just clicking on there and you can see they have show up. And if you mouse over the graphic area, you can see you can place them wherever you want. I like to sort of leave them in the default position just like that. Now, one thing that can happen and happens to me quite often is that you X out of something not thinking and you're going, oh, I just lost what I was trying to drop in. But you'll notice that this always seems to show up and you can always restore what was already inserted. So now we have these parts in here. I want to show you some other things that you can do with insert. One is that you can go into the document that you currently have and you have all these parts within one part studio. You can always go into assemblies. Now, if that's if you have more assemblies down here and you can insert another sub assembly, we're not going to worry about that right now. This is the quick start. We're going to worry about this, but you can also look at other documents. Now, when you look at other documents, you can look in my on shape, which will show you all the files that you've worked on. And you can come into this and you can start inserting parts like say the drive wheel from the trailer bot that I was working on before. And the same thing applies to assemblies within other things like the trailer bot. There are some of the caveats to this is, is that you need to create a version of the document that you have. And we'll cover that a little later, but let's not be too concerned. I don't think that you guys are going to be getting into this necessarily right away. Let's just go back to other documents. Here's where things get really kind of interesting is that you can go to public documents. Now these are other public documents, much like this one is, that people have put in there. So let's say that we need to get a three millimeter screw. Oh, there's a screw, three millimeter already there. So instead of having to go and look for something and try to get one to insert, you can actually find it right there. This one might be a little too long, which it is. And it's also got some details in it, like the threads that are really kind of a waste of time and, and eat up a lot of the processor. So we're just going to exit out of that. And can command Z so we don't have that. Let's just go back and see if there's any other three millimeter screws that we can do use. Uh, do, 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 those are bearings. So let's just do um, an M3 is the proper designation for this. And you have an M3 by 20 by 14. I figure an M3 by well, 0.5 is too short. 10 is too long. Eight, maybe. Do we have anything like that? So maybe we'll just choose one of these just to use for the time being. Now you'll see that there's no part studios available. So some of these don't necessarily aren't necessarily what you need. M3 by 12. M3 by 8. This one looks like it'll probably be about right. So I had to come in and kind of look around and see if we could find something that would work. And we can put that one in there just like that. That's all fine and dandy, but like I said, all these threads can be a bit of a pain and you can't necessarily edit this model. Some of the things that I like to do is go look for models online. And there's several places that I go and check out. One is GrabCAD. So GrabCAD.com. If you don't have a membership here, please go get one. And you can search for an M3 screw or pretty much anything you could ever imagine. And you'd be surprised at how many things are here. So we'll type in M3. Won't necessarily come up. Actually, the M3 socket head cap screw is right here. And um, it might be the one that we could use. So the, the one thing I see here though is that it includes the threads and that might be a bit of a problem. So let's see what else we can look at. Um, other places that I like to look at is trace parts. And these are places where you can download a 3D model and then what we're gonna do is upload it back into the system. So trace parts is another place you can look for a lot of these things, a lot of 3D models. So we could look for an M3 screw. And we have 
a ton of them in different styles and we've got grub screws and all sorts of set screws and all sorts of other things. So one of the last places I look is McMaster car. So McMaster.com. So M3 socket head cap screws. Let's see what that comes up with. And those kind of look like what I want to have. So we can keep that in there. And one of the final places that I look is 3dx-us.com. And here you have a bunch of catalogs and everything that you can go and take a look through. So you can look in here again, we can look for M3. And we'll come up with different catalogs that will probably have what you need. So these places are actually really great places to go for, for your parts. My preferred go-to seems to always be McMaster car. So I don't want an M36 screw, I want an M3. I'm just gonna do a search there. Hmm. Okay, so let's just go back to the original and you, searching for stuff in each one of these systems is a little different. You kind of have to go in and monkey around. So we have screws and bolts, socket head screw sizes. Now in here we can say we want it metric, we want M3 probably want something around six millimeters long and choose any one of these will probably do. So once you're in here, you notice that you have uh, a part number here and there's always a product detail. And in this product detail, you can always download what you need. The way um, Onshape works or the files that Onshape works with are parasolids. So if you can find parasolids, that would be best, um, but I don't see them here. SolidWorks files will work just fine. So you could use that. I just will work fine. And those are probably the two that you'd want to play with is the SolidWorks or the iGIS. So once we have that, we're going to hit save. And you can see that it downloaded here. Now that we've downloaded it, let's insert a new element. In other words, we're going to import that file that we just downloaded. It's going to show up in my downloads. And we'll open that up. And it'll come up with a dialog asking us what the orientation you want. Um, if you have a SOLIDWORKS file, the Y and X axis are inverted, I believe, and it causes things to look kind of weird as far as where they show up and the way people like to have things. So checking the invert that is generally a good idea. So you can see that it shows up here as a file, which is a tab that you can save and use, but it's not necessary to keep here. And then you have the actual part model that shows up. And I made one mistake here. I've got a tapered head or a countersink. That's kind of weird because that's not what I asked for here. Maybe, you know what I probably did is I downloaded a few of these in the past. So if I didn't like what I got here, I can always come in and delete. Delete, and let's just try this again. I'm gonna sort these by date. That way I shouldn't have any issues figuring out which one. Okay, so this is probably just one of the older downloads that I used in the past. Imported models are Y-axis up again. We'll hit OK. We'll bring that in and we have the two tabs show up and it converts it. There we go. Here's another keyboard shortcut that's handy. You know how I was telling you that you want to hide things with, uh, with the eyeballs? You can also hit the P key and it gets rid of all the planes. We hit the F key to bring everything in nice and tight. Now, this is one thing where these threads eat up a lot of computer processing power. So remember how you could always come in and do a delete face. So we're gonna delete that coil. And we'll rotate around and we'll delete the other coil down at the bottom here, this other face. Like that. Let's see if that cleans it up. Does not. So then they're probably having some issues with that face. Okay, so sometimes you have problems like I am having right now. So what I ended up doing is I just hit the space bar and that deselects everything. So I'm going to get rid of that, that chamfer. I want to delete that face. I want to delete that coil face and that coil face. There we go. Okay, 
So now you can see that when we delete all that, it just leaves us with a nice cylindrical shaft. So we know that it's M3 screw and we don't have to worry about all of this extra information. So we can just place that inside of our assembly as is and it's gonna use up less processing power. So let's go back to our assembly. Now we've got this guy where we can't edit and get rid of those threads. So we're just gonna select him and we're gonna delete. We're gonna go insert. We're gonna take this guy here and we're gonna insert him just like so. And we're gonna say, there we go. So now we've got him in there. Now we need to put everything together. You'll notice that when we're playing with a lot of stuff is I can click and drag some of these parts and they're gonna go flying around. So generally it's a good idea to take one part doesn't really matter which one, but any of them, and then lock it down. So we're gonna click on that part there, we're gonna right click, and we are going to fix it. So now everything that we hook up to this one part, this part isn't gonna float or move anywhere, it's gonna stay there static all the time. The next thing that we need to do is start mating things together. So when I say mate things together, we've got different ways of mating things together. We've got a way to make a revolute mate so we can make it so that this guy can spin around an axis. We've got the fastened mate, which will make things nice and tight and locked in together. We've got different types of mates as far as sliding, um, planar, um, cylindrical slots, etc., etc. And you got to get to get into those and start playing with them as as you go along with with some of your more model with some more of your modeling. Now, what we're going to do in this case is that we want to have a revolute mate. And we're gonna go to this face and you'll notice when I go over a face after I have the mate selected is that it starts showing these little targets. Now I want it to be revolute around that face and that circle. Let's rotate back up around here. And then let's go to this face. We want it to be revolute in this area. Now, when you move this around, sometimes these pucks disappear and they move to something different. So if you press and hold the shift key, once you can see all the pucks that you would like to use, then you can come in and select the one that you want. And you notice that that snapped into place. We're gonna skip out of this now. And now you'll notice that one part is fixed and this guy here can move back and forth and slide around a little bit, which is pretty handy. So when we come and do the next Revolute Mate, we can hook it onto this guy and we can have some realistic motion as far as how these things would be fixed together. I'll say that that's okay. Now we're gonna want some of these pieces mirrored to the other side. And there is no real mirror function here, so there are a few ways you can get around that. So you can click on the link here, and you can hit Command C or Control C then you can go move your mouse back into this square and command V and you can have another one show up. So you can start cutting and pasting some of these guys in here. Then we'll go around like this. And again, we're going to start doing the revolute mate. We want it on that mate connector there. And this is what one thing that's going to be kind of interesting is, is that we're going to come over to this face. We're going to want to make it revolute, but you'll notice that suddenly it is inside of that other part. It's reversed. It's not what I want it to actually be. So what you can do is you can come up here and you can flip the primary axis and then it'll snap it back around to the direction that you actually want it to be. And we'll say that that's okay. And you see, we can move that stuff around still. So again, we're going to do a revolute mate. Hover over there, grab that one point, and then we're gonna grab it on the other side. And we've got these two pieces now hooked together. And now that they're hooked together, you'll notice that I can also move these things around. So I can click, let's try this again. I can click and drag some of these parts and you'll see that they'll rotate and do everything that you want. But you can also click onto something like this and you notice that we have some arrows, some arrows, some planes and some rotations. We can rotate by grabbing that little sort of the circle with the two arcs on it allows you to rotate. 
if you grab one of these planes, it allows you to move along whatever plane that you happen to be dragging. And the same thing applies for the arrows. It won't rotate, but it'll actually move down or up or whatever direction that the arrow happens to be. So you can finesse some of these movements if you really need them, really need to, to do that. Here's one thing that's going to be kind of fun. And this is one thing that uh, Onshape implemented that I absolutely fell in love with. So we're going to do a fastened mate. So this one's going to be locked in and solid, but that's okay. And we're going to choose this M3 screw. We're going to come there and grab that guy there. We're going to throw him into this hole where he would normally fit. And we're going to say that that's okay. And that's exactly what we want. Trying to do this over and over and over again is a bit of a pain. So we have the part one. This is something where we should have renamed that in the, in the parts tab. And we'll get back in and do that. But what I want you to pay attention to is this replicate command. So we're going to hit replicate. So it's going to replicate this part, but it also found some edges and some mates that were being used. So let's see if I select on this face. Well, sorry about that. What it was trying to do in this case, remember it's blue. It was asking for another instance. Instance. This time, what I want to do is come in and grab a face. Now you notice that when I clicked on that face, it snapped in another one of those screws. Let's grab these other two faces. Now these are similar, it's similar geometry to what was done before. So it understands what all is going on. And now we have all the screws put in, in one go very quickly by doing it that way. 